Welcome back to Politics Unplugged. The school voucher program was a battleground in the legislature this year with Governor Hobbs opposing it, but Republicans insisting on keeping it in place. The fight will resume next year. And here to talk about it, Jenny Clark, the founder of Love Your School, a group that advocates for voucher systems. Thank you so much for being here. Again, don't have a whole lot of time in this segment. I apologize for that. So let's just jump right in. Um, lots of questions about, uh, you know, keeping people accountable who take this taxpayer money to send their kids to public schools. We just had a hearing in the legislature recently um, as questions are mounting about some of the expenditures that have been found about this, people buying, buying Lego sets and various other things that are, people are questioning whether they should be used for, uh, for, for school stuff. Um, my question to you is, I know you're a big advocate of this, but should there be more accountability over this program that has grown by some estimates, hundreds of millions of dollars more than anticipated. Well, I think there should be more accountability actually in the public school system. Unlike the public school system, with the Empowerment Scholarship Account Program, every single transaction requires a receipt. And if a tutor or a therapist or some sort of vendor is paid in that regard, a certification for that particular tutor has to be uploaded into our online portal. I've been on the ESA program now almost six years and I have five children. We've uploaded thousands of individual receipts, and I think a lot of your viewers may not be aware of just how much accountability is actually in the ESA program. Of course, in the public school, you can't drill down publicly uh, without doing a Freedom of Information Act request on individual expenses like you can in the ESA program. It's more accountable. Well, shouldn't we have a better idea, though, about who is using this? One of the questions right now is um, what's accounting for the, uh, the growth and the cost of this program? Are these kids um, who were in private schools beforehand and now, you know, year, prior to this program being expanded universally to every student in, in, in Arizona, um, weren't taking public money, taxpayer money. Now they are taking taxpayer money. Um, shouldn't we have a better handle on what that is? And shouldn't we have a better handle of like who, what types of students, where they're from, who the people are that are going to this? Arizona taxpayers deserve access to their child's education funding. If that child goes to a public school system, Arizona spends over $14,700 paying for that child to be educated. If that child chooses an empowerment scholarship, the cost is around seven to $7,500. So I disagree that the location of the child is what matters the most because we know that wealthy families put their children in public school all the time and the state spends hundreds of millions of dollars educating those kids. It's not about the location, uh, a public school versus a private option. It's about the student and their education. Well, I mean, the, some of the wealthier families too, um, you know, they're getting money now, taxpayer money to send their, their kids to schools when prior, previously they were not. I mean, should, shouldn't there be, maybe, have you ever thought about, should there be a cap on the income of these families that maybe if you make above a certain level, um, maybe you don't get the, the ESA power man, a, a scholarship account that you're well, doing well enough. You can afford to send your own kids on your own dime to these private, uh, these private schools. Well, currently, there's no income cap for the public school system. Hundreds of millions of dollars are spent on wealthy families educating their kids at the public school. So why should those families not have access to a scholarship that actually saves the state money? That's because the ESA is only 90% of the state portion. So until there's an income cap on public schools and the amount of money and tuition, if you will, mm -hmm. that the state pays for those kids, why would we say that the empowerment scholarship uh, should have some sort of income cap? It doesn't make any logical sense. Yeah, but I mean, private schools, they don't serve the, the public good in the same way that public schools I do disagree. That. I completely disagree. And that's because it's not about the location. Education is a public good. Taxpayers deserve access to their child's education dollars. Now, whether that's a public school, well, private schools whether it's a private, private school, private, public, whether it's a homeschool yeah. or micro school, public schools parents have, deserve access to those funds. But public schools... They, they don't have to accept every kid. Public schools do not accept every child. That is a completely, uh, m complete misunderstanding by the public. If you talk what to schools are denying? if you talk to any family of a student with a disability, they will tell you our children are not allowed to just open enroll sure. into any public school. Go look right now online at the uh, availability for students with disabilities in the public school system, and you will see 
full, full, at capacity, at capacity. So I reject the idea that public schools accept all students. They and do sure, not. And sure, the ESA program started as an empowerment scholarship account for special needs students. It has grown beyond that. But in general, they do have to accept every student out there. Maybe, uh, you know, if you can give me some examples of students that are being rejected from public schools, because my understanding is if a kid goes to a public school, they have to be taught. Well, I'll let the parents who are watching this segment reach out to you, so hopefully you can share their stories. But the truth of the matter is that the Empowerment Scholarship Account Program is an amazing program. It okay. gives families freedom, it gives them flexibility, and I think that's the most important thing when it comes to a child's education. And I'll, I'll leave you with the, the final question here, though, is if there was a recommendation for more oversight and more accountability on, uh, on this ESA program, would you favor anything? I don't know how much more oversight and accountability we can have on this program, Dennis. I mean, when you actually dig into the specifics and the way the program works, not, not the way that opponents say that it works, you dig into the way that it works, you talk to parents, you hear our experiences, I don't know what more we could possibly do to make the program more accountable than it already is. All right, we'll have to wrap it there. I begin to apologize. I know, uh, short segment, I apologize for that. But coming up next, the so-called fake election.